one pitch taken high and deep to right field. Otani. Hey guys, Coach Bill Sandil coming to you from Chandler, Arizona, and for the next ten minutes, I'm going to be your personal hitting coach. And today, I've been getting a few questions on, Coach, can you send me some drills that I can do with my college or high school player? I'm gonna send, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a lot more drills up there. I'm gonna really really format some drills that we do with our pro guys and uh, with our with our high school and college guys and some high level guys you know, that are just, you know, above the norm that, you know, needs to work on their launch quickness or something. But I'm going to put five drills up and we're going to walk through each drill individually and I can explain the process because as, as a hitting coach, and I think you know this too, if you're a hitting coach, you can go into a gym with a tee and you're going to warm up. You're going to do your normal warm-up drills and, and then you want to get into certain specialty drills that, you know, that provide you movement or provide you a uh, quick movement to, to kind of work on and get your swing plane down. And that's what those T-work drills do. And then we're going to progress into front toss. Then we progress into live and so on and so on. But I'll, I'll make sure that I give you that progression. But at any given time, we have about 16 rotations we could do. So let me give you some five drills that we do pretty much on a, on a daily basis, uh, depending on who we're training. Okay, guys? Stay tuned. Okay, guys, so that in, the, in this first drill you're going to see, I like to do what is called a three-quarter open drill. And basically what a three-quarter open drill is, is we're going to isolate the lower half. We're going to make the hitter kind of work into creating a good corner, okay? Again, three-quarter open, meaning you're going you're gonna to open up uh, with your belly button facing the pitcher, and, and all you're going to do is create a corner, and then you're going to work on your launch, your barrel turn to connection. So you would, that's what you're going to see in this drill, and and then we'll progress into something else. Okay. All right, guys. So in this drill, we're just going to work on connection extension, or we work on our launch quickness. So as we roll through, you're going to see we're going to launch the barrel. It's going to come off our shoulders nice and tight. We're going to create a nice power V on top. Good connection. Power through zone. Extension. Shut it down. Okay, and that's all he's going to do. He's going to take like 10 of these connection extensions, and all we're going to do is work on that launch quickness from a stationary position, try to keep our head behind the ball, extend through, and then shut it down. Okay, guys, so after we do that launch quickness drill, we do what is called a continuation drill where it's basically a two-part drill. So the second part of it is swing through. So we work on our launch quickness, where we're actually just now, instead of saying connection extension, we're swinging through, okay? So this is the second part of that first drill. Guys, so the second drill is called a 2T oppo drill. And you gotta understand, when you're watching this video, the drill is gonna go by very fast. We only have a snippet of the drills. So if you need to slow down the video, stop it, take a look at it, you can. But so we're gonna go, we're gonna go fairly fast, but this 2T oppo drill is there for uh, for swing plane. Uh, part of it is we're working on the outside corner, so we set two T's up and we work one T higher than the next, and we put two balls on them because we want to hit that outside T without hitting the inside T. So we work on that swing plane. We work on getting through the ball so we're not pulling off the ball. So that's what you're gonna see in this drill. Okay, guys, so I realized that second drill was very fast. It was only about one swing. I'm trying to get some more footage, and I will. But basically, that 2T drill is really simple. You put it on the outside part of the plate, and you put it a little bit lower than the inside T, and you stagger the Ts. So you want to make sure that's a swing plane drill. So basically, you, as you make connection with the ball, you're going to be on a certain swing plane. Okay? If you come off the ball too quick before you extend through the ball, that's what that other T is there for. So when you don't extend through connection and you just pull off connection, you'll hit that other ball on the T. So that's what the 2T drill kind of supports is it's really a swing plane drill. It's an oppo swing plane drill that we want to stay behind the ball and we want to drive through the ball. Okay, now the next drill is what we call a 3T call-out drill. So this is more for... 
somebody who you know is, is basically understands how to how to swing in in every area of the plate so basically what you're going to do is you're going to get the kid or player into a either a low stride hold position or get them into a one motion position i like to work with visualization so this is a, a little bit more challenging because i have three t's and basically i like the visualization part of it is where they visualize the pitcher and then they funnel their eyesight to the hitting zone. And then when they're in their leg kick or toe tap or whatever they use for timing, I will call out. So as soon as they scap load or they load up, I'll call out middle, in, or out. And they'll have to react. As soon as they get to load, they'll have to funnel right to their eyesight to the connection point and then launch quickness to connection on one of the tees we just called out. So you can call out inside twice i mean you don't have to call three t's in a row you can call the same location so they're not cheating i think it's a really good exercise to get them visualizing and then getting into motion and right before they're ready to get the foot down you call out location that way they can focus and explode through okay so we're going to keep progressing so we're going to work from a t side toss area to the front and then we're going to do front toss so that it's kind of a natural progression for us to work to front toss where we're, we're about 10 15 feet in front and we work very very fast with fast front toss and then we work with timing so we work with a small leg kick they'll either get into their leg kick and hold it there we call that the lag so we'll get there into our lag and then as my hand starts to go down they stride and they go so that's kind of the next progression we work into. All right, guys, so the last progression we do, certainly not the least, um, we, we have so many progressions, uh, is what we call back, knee, down. And if you watch the WBC, you saw Atani for Japan hit a, over a 420-foot home run from his back knee. Adrian Beltran has been living on doing this. There's been a few more people um, showcased back, knee, down home runs. Um, but again, why do we use it? And basically, back knee down is used for adjustability for pitches that are off speed or they fool you or the fastball below your knees and you don't want to reach for it to create an arm bar, which of course you'll flip, you'll roll your wrist and you'll just pound it into the ground. So you got to use your legs as your elevator up and down. So by getting your back knee down, you get to lower yourself to that swing plane, how that ball enters the hitting zone and you don't have to change your top half at all. That way you're not reaching for the ball as it's low at your ankles. And so all the good hitters, when when it's instinctive, so when, when they see that pitch going below the strike zone and they've committed, they go back knee down. And what you're going to see is my students here uh, doing back knee down. They do it very well. It's something we do at the end of our sessions to, to, to work on body control and adjustability. And it's really, really worked well. And uh, my guys have done a great job with it. So check it out. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, guys, so that's the five videos. Obviously, there's a lot more we could keep going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make some more videos up. I'm going to put them online. All our training videos in our sessions, we're going to start taping some sessions live and putting them up online for you to see. But if you like the video, like and subscribe, and I'll be happy to um, do more videos that you're asking. Keep those questions coming. Tell all your friends. Have yourself a great rest of the week and a better weekend. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. You've got to bet on you. You believe in everybody else. You clap for everybody else. You support everybody else. You're baking cakes and making cookies for everybody else. But when are you going to look in the mirror and believe in the darn person you see? It's about time for you to believe in you because you've got it.